it's your buddy Peace and Harmony with you here today. We got in a question uh, from a viewer who inquired about a female psychopath in their life and how can this person really pretend to be in such this extraordinary relationship with them and have so many different rods in the fire, um, have these different lives going on, these different relationships where um, she's, you know, texting other individuals and basically letting this person know that she's got this other individual who she's courting or talking to and is creating this air of suspicion. And how can she basically be so blind to his needs? So I want to just talk about that um, here briefly to address this because it seems like I've been getting a lot of questions about this, especially it relates to psychopathic individuals. Um, as you must understand, a psychopath individual has really kind of a, a void, a vast, uh, kind of a, a real emptiness within. Um, they are, it's, it's almost like a, a very deep abyss. They, they feel very dead inside, very empty. Um, these are all terms for feeling. Um, they feel kind of non-existent underneath and it's because of the, the brain regions um, and the way that their, uh, their prefrontal con uh, cortex, um, areas of the uh, limbic brain, the feeling brain, and that which relates to the reward center, um, impulse control, uh, learning, and really sort of what we call morality or consciousness, the I identifying between what is moral or immoral, right or wrong. There's a, a disorder of the processing in the neurology there. And, you know, um, there's all sorts of, you know, ideas about um, where it started or if they're, you know, born this way or if it's, you know, nature versus nurture, you know, where they um, abused as kids. You know, there's a lot of different factors as with anything. So um, when it comes to understanding how these people are, um, you must really realize that a psychopathic individual because of this disordered, um, you know, brain regions and um, neural uh, pathways, which are going on along with their the neurotransmitters, which are the reward centers. Uh, in other words, um, behaviors that are rewarding, pleasurable, pleasure seeking, um, are on are hypersensitive in this individual. So they will engage in a lot of high risk behaviors, as well as they're very apt to. Uh, be very uncomfortable or very restless with boredom. So they don't like to sit still for too long. They don't like to only be in one place for too long, be with one person for too long. I mean, they need to have a lot of rods in the fire. It's just, it's just like moving, you know, a lot of things around in the environment just to keep them kind of amused or stimulated or off of this feeling inside of being dead, uh, empty, bored, lifeless. It's just, it's just a real different state that um, most people have kind of a, uh, you know, uh, a baseline of feeling content or happy or fulfilled or yes, they have drives and motivation in their life, but it's not this really kind of pathological boredom that causes them or pushes them to ex uh, um, express kind of like very uh, violent or, um, you know, very high risk behaviors, which kind of satisfy this this pathological drive. So, um, you know, this, uh, this superficial connection with others is, is based on manipulation. So it's not just like, um, you know, do you want to go get a hot chocolate or do you want to go do a tea or do you want to go for a walk? I mean, it's, it's not because they feel they want to, um, they don't necessarily want to have sex. They don't necessarily want to have a relationship, but they do it to satisfy, a certain need in their life and a certain need to learn how to further manipulate others because they really observe and um, watch others and they then watch others and they kind of um, observe and find out what quote unquote healthy quote unquote normal uh, people find pleasurable or satisfying. So they'll like, they'll observe couples like while they're holding hands, so they'll be like, hmm, that's really interesting the way she does this when he does that and you know they'll then mimic these behaviors and then they'll notice also like what quote unquote normal or the rest of society um finds emotionally connective you know the words love um you know uh the the things that people really want to have in life this connection with others you know going places together we're going to build a life we're going to go traveling we're going to have this exciting life you know jet set life whatever it is the the, uh, the, you know, you're envisioning for your couple and then as a couple, and then, 
you know, this person then kind of says, oh, okay, they more suss it out. They more, you know, uh, find, oh, wow, this is interesting that this is what this person wants. And so then they just basically feed you what you want to hear. So even though they don't feel it inside, it's just what they have observed and what they then mimic. And then they just basically serve up to you um, in telling you what you want to hear. So in terms of it being superficial, I think that's what, um, you know, you might understand is that it's superficial. There's no emotional connection. So sub something f superficial means on the surface. Something superficial um, means, you know, it doesn't have a lot of substance. You know, when someone says you're very superficial, it means they're fake. It means, you know, you're, you're just, you know, giving lip service. You're just, it's a lot of talk. It's a lot of fluff. It's not a lot of backing. Um, it's not a lot, a lot of reality. It's not, you know, grounded. You don't have your feet on the ground. Um, and so, you know, when you talk about superficial, it's just all hearsay. It's just, it has nothing to do with truth. It has nothing to do with, you know, you know, what this person actually feels. And so I think that is what's so twisted and what's so disgusting or what's so horrible for these people is that, you know, they don't, um, you have to understand that this is not, you know, uh, this person is not like you um, in terms of maybe what you want in the relationship. And they're furthermore unable to deliver that which you're seeking. And so if you feel kind of like this big hole in your gut around this person, you're feeling that pathology. You're able to actually sense it. You're able to identify, you know, there's a real put on with this individual. And if you're, you know, oftentimes this person will string people along, you know, with this until they really start to get it and understand. And then that's what we call exposing this individual. When people kind of expose them and see them really for what and who they are. And so once you see that, you know, ugh, you know, you might want to like, cover it up, you know, ugh, put the dirt over it, you know, in the sand and like that didn't happen because that's really difficult to accept. Um, that's a tough pull to swallow. And oftentimes people don't have the emotional repertoire or the vocabulary, as I say, to identify it. It's very difficult. Um, there's not a lot of words in um, the English language, I would say, or maybe even other languages to express kind of um, what that is. And, and so um, by virtue of that pathology, even though they, um, they appear, you know, charming, very good looking, intelligent, you know, functional, they can belong in a lot of groups. This is again, satisfying that, you know, inner state of boredom, which is a pathological boredom and then causes, you know, it's just like, um, and then, you know, so they need to keep all this going. And then when they lose people, it's like this, you know, then they react oftentimes with hostility, rage, aggression, you know, but they might like push you away before you go away. It's like, that's why you get a lot of this, um, you know, the smear campaign triangulation is they're basically telling you, you know, you're done or you're about to be done. And you need to pay attention to that in the stage and not keep bargaining because, you've now, you know, seen what it is. And if you can't face that reality, you know, you better do a gut check and, you know, face that reality. Um, because reality is reality. I mean, you can't argue with it. You can't change it. Um, and, you know, reality will get the best of you then. I mean, reality is going to win out in the end. It's just, you, you need to have the courage to face it. And just being like, okay, I know this and accept this in your being and, um, and get, you know, a, another viewer had asked, you know, after the withdrawal, you know, this, the, the terror was going on for months and they're like, basically, how long is this going to go on? Well, it really depends, you know, um, how long you've been with this individual, um, how deep was the manipulation, you know, or how superficial, <laughs> how, how much did they brainwash you, gaslight you, uh, depersonalize you, get you to kind of dissociate from the rest of your life, um, and kind of disown your identity and disown your reality. And, you know, and until you can really embrace that and then move on, you know, it's going to take some work. It's going to take some time. I mean, it might take six months. It might take a year. It might take 18 months until you really fully kind of heal and get that positive emotion and kind of um, grounded back into reality. So you, you definitely need to watch my videos on how to rehumanize yourself, um, you know, work to comfort yourself, um, get um, through that real uh, sort of terror and, you know, intrusive thoughts and just, you know, that feeling of disconnectedness from your body, your feelings, 
um, you know, kind of like, where am I <laughs> feeling like you feel suddenly, you know, like you don't know where you are. You, you feel very lost, very disconnected from your life. It's a very scary feeling. And, you know, you need to really um, know that you're dealing with someone who you don't want in your life. Um, and until you can really see that and accept it, you can call it rock bottom, you know, and if you've been to the rock bottom and you've seen it and you know what you know, you know, you should be done and out of there. I mean, you know, and if the pain is not great enough, if you have, if you're just still laying on the nail, if you're, you know, um, you know, you're, you know, you're on the nail, you're bleeding and, you know, you're walking around, you know, uh, still wounded, hurt, and you're still trying to, you know, entertain this, you know, um, the pain is eventually going to get great enough and you're going to have to basically wait until that occurs until you know what you know and then you have no more doubt so um and that will help you with your denial but chances are if you um go to that that depth um it's going to it's going to take a long time to heal it's going to take a, a lot of work and um people most people aren't going to get where you're at you're going to feel very kind of distance emotionally from others and that's not comfortable so I would encourage you to resensitize yourself, um, get this person out of your life. Um, you know, you need to go no contact and you need to do it quickly. And once you can do that, you're on the road to recovery. So that's good news. The minute you do that, get everything out from them, um, get the pictures, um, get the emails. It's just, it's, it's done. It's over. It's no further. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm apologized if this has happened to you in your life. It's a horrible thing. It's a horrible lesson. Um, they don't teach you this in garden, kindergarten. They don't teach you this in first grade. They don't teach you this in college. It's something, it's just you learn um, as a large lesson in life. But furthermore, it gives you the ability to really appreciate and validate those good people that are in life and those great works that are part of um, the greater human existence, you know, the great works of art, the architecture, the the music, um, the great food, the people who really do care for the planet, um, who have written great love stories and who have experienced great love in their life and are sharing that. And knowing that is where you want to connect in life and not this toxic, superficial rage in these individuals who really manipulate because eventually that um, superficial boredom is is going to um, be exposed and you're going to find out that they've, they've got all these other things going on in their life that you basically don't want or need to be part of. Peace and harmony with you here today. I hope these videos do help. Please share and please subscribe for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support.